so we'll start off tonight sat. So either on your knees or cross-legged or sat on a block or a cushion, I do have a block. Um, just comfortable. So make sure that your back is nice and tall, honouring the natural curves of your spine. <clears throat> and we'll just take a moment to check in. So either with your hands in your lap, or if you want to connect more closely to the breath, one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. And just gently close your eyes. And just notice this evening how you're breathing. Notice the quality of the inhale and the quality of the exhale. Notice the depth of the breath. And notice where the breath moves your body. In the whole of your torso, from your shoulders all the way down to your belly. And take time to notice how you feel this evening. Just having a check with any sensations in the body, any tight spots, any emotions. <clears throat> We've had a turbulent week already with the latest announcements, so that's bound to create some sort of response in us. <clears throat> Just take a moment to acknowledge that. We have a class this evening based on hips. So loosening up all around the, the pelvis, front and back to loosen the hips. And the hips hold a lot of emotion. So sometimes that will escape in class. So just know that it's temporary. <clears throat> and whatever we're feeling will pass. So then gently flutter the eyes open and we'll do a three part breath to start with this evening. So if you imagine that you are a canister from your um, sit bones up to the top of your head, <clears throat> we'll fill that canister up in three parts. So we breathe in for two into the belly, then in for another two to the chest and then in for another two, completely full. And then we exhale out for six having a pause in between each step. So exhale out any air you have in your chest right now, then in, two, pause, in, two, pause, in, two, full, out, five, four, three, two, one. In, two, pause, in, two, pause, in, two, pause, out, five, four, three, two, one. In, two, pause, in, two, pause, in, two, pause, out, five, four, three, two, one. In, 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 out, in, 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 out, in, 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 out, the last one, in, 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 out, excellent, then just let the breath come back to normal. And the first flow we'll do, we'll do in tabletop. So come around onto your hands and your knees. 
any discomfort in the knees, you can always fold the mat over or put a cushion or a bolster underneath your knees or a folded blanket. And then we'll start with a few rounds of cat-cow. So as you inhale, take the belly down towards the mat, stretching the chest open, looking up. Then as we exhale, curl the tailbone under, pull the tummy muscles in, drop the head. Inhale as you come down, really allowing the chest to open, press the ground away, look up. And then exhale, curl that tailbone under, curve through the spine, drop the head. Inhale as we come down. And then exhale as we go up. Inhale as we come down. Exhale as you go up. Inhale coming down. And exhale going up. Inhale, coming down. And exhale, going up. And then come back to a neutral spine. So the hands can be just in front of the shoulders, knees directly below the hips. I'm trying to keep the spine and the torso as still and stable as possible. Take the right leg out behind you. Take a nice big inhale. And then on an exhale, take the opposite arm out in front of you and really ground down through the hand that's on the mat and the shin that's on the mat. Really pulling the core muscles in, finding your stability. Squeeze the inner thighs towards one another to help with that. On your next inhale, really stretch the fingers forward and stretch the toes back. And on an exhale, bring the elbow to the knee. Inhale, stretch it back out, neutral spine. Then on an exhale, elbow to knee and the spine can curve. Inhale, stretch it out, really reach through those fingers and reach through those toes. And then exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, stretch it back out, place the hand down, place the knee down. If it's too much with the arm and leg, you can always just do legs, so entirely up to you. Always modify for your practice. So this time we'll do the other side. Take the left leg out behind you and the opposite arm. Inhale, really stretch and find your stability. Really pull the core muscles in. Then exhale, elbow to knee and the spine can round. Inhale to stretch it out, long arm, long leg. Exhale, elbow to knee. Good job. Inhale, stretch it out. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale to stretch it out, press the hand down, press the knee down. Take the hips back towards the heels and have a little stretch in child's pose. Nice big inhale here and a nice big exhale here. Then bring it up through tabletop. This one's a little bit different. So this time take the right leg out behind you, keep both hands down. Take a nice big inhale to stretch. Exhale, bring the knee to the side, like a fire hydrant, I think that's called. So inhale, stretch it back. Exhale, bring it to the side, lifting that knee as high as possible. Inhale, stretch it back. Exhale, bring it to the side, lift the knee as high as possible. Inhale it back, put the knee down, other side. Take the leg out behind you. Nice big inhale, exhale, bring the knee to the side. Inhale it back, exhale, knee to the side. Lift the knee as high as you can. Inhale, take it back. Exhale, bring it to the side, lift that knee high. Inhale it back, and then exhale the knee back down onto the floor. Have a little stretch through the back if you need to by taking the hips back towards the heels. Nice big inhale. And then on an exhale, come back to tabletop. So same again with the legs. If you want to add the arm in, you can add the arm in. Otherwise, just stick with the same on the legs. So starting with the right leg, take the right leg out behind you. And if you want to bring the arm in too, bring the left arm out in front of you. 
Take a nice big inhale and then exhale, bring the knee to the side and the elbow to the side in the cactus arms. Inhale, stretch it out. Exhale, bring it to cactus. Inhale, stretch it out. Exhale, bring it to cactus. Inhale, stretch it out. Hand down, knee down. Good stuff, other side. Left leg out, right arm out. Nice big inhale. Exhale, bring it to cactus. Inhale to stretch it out. Exhale it to cactus. Inhale to stretch it out. Exhale to cactus. Then put the hand down and the knee down. Good stuff. Okay, so this time we keep our hands on the ground. We keep the knee bent and we'll take the knee in a great big circle, getting into all of the range of motion of our hip. But we want to try and keep our back as still as possible. So the circle is going to be smaller than you think. So lifting the knee out to the back to start with, as soon as you start to feel that your back is moving, take the knee out to the side and bring it forwards as far as you can, but keep that back still. So we're not arching, we're not rounding. All of the movement is coming slowly and it's coming from the hip. We're going to do three circles, so that's two. Let's do one more. Taking it back, bringing the knee out to the side, underneath you and back to the starting position. Then we'll take it in the other direction. So again, really ground down through the three points of contact you have left on the mat. Keep the back nice and neutral. Hug the knee in towards the chest, keeping the spine long. Then take the knee out to the side and circle it around to the back, trying to keep that spine still. Bring it under and then circle it around. Who knew this was such hard work when we're moving so slowly? <laughs> Bringing it back underneath the body, the last one, taking it out to the side, circling it around as much as your hip will allow, and then bringing the knee back down onto the mat. Take the hips back towards the heels in child's pose. Stretch the hands away from you to really elongate the spine. Nice big inhale here, and a nice big exhale here. Then come back up to tabletop and we'll do the other side. So starting by going backwards. So first of all, firm everything up. Make the core strong, make the back nice and neutral. Then take the left knee back behind you, circle it around to the side, and then bring it underneath you, and then back to the starting position. So it's going really slowly. Take it back, out to the side, keeping that back and that Spine as still as possible underneath you, then back to the start. One more, take it back. Bring that knee out to the side. Underneath and back, good. Then the other way. So hug the knee under you to start with, wing it out to the side, take it back. Bring it forwards, wing it out to the side, take it back. Last one, bring it under, really controlled movement. Take it out to the side, take it back, and then bring it back down. Take the hips back towards your heels, stretch the fingertips out in front of you. Nice big inhale with the hips coming down towards the heels. Nice big exhale to relax. Then coming back up to all fours. Two options here, we're just going to do three each side. Take the leg out behind you. You can either bring it into a fire hydrant, down, back behind you, fire hydrant, down. Or if you've got the range of motion in your hip, you take it out behind you, flex the foot, and bring the foot with a straight leg to the side, keeping the foot off the ground, and then stretch it back. Okay, so three each side, either way is up to you. So inhale it back, Exhale it forwards. Inhale it back. Exhale it forwards. Keeping that heel up if you've got a straight leg. Inhale it back. Exhale it forwards. And then take the knees back to the mat and we'll do the other side. 
just moving over so I don't kick anything. Okay, so take the other leg out behind you. Nice big inhale, exhale, bring it forwards. Inhale it back, exhale it forwards. Keep that foot up off the floor. Inhale it back, exhale it forwards. Good. Inhale it back, bring the knee back down to the mat. Take the hips back towards the heels. Stretch the hand out in child's pose. Nice big inhale here and a nice big exhale here. And then we'll press our hands down into the mat, tuck the toes and push our way up into our first down dog of the evening. So legs can be nice and bent. Really press through all of the fingers and the palms of the hands. Stretching the chest through towards the thighs. Really lengthening the spine as much as you can and taking those sit bones up towards the ceiling. Then maybe pressing one foot down to the mat, maybe pressing the other foot down to the mat, bending the opposite leg as you do so to stretch out down the backs of the thighs. Maybe having a wiggle through the hips. Move your down dog in whatever way you need to move. Then looking forwards, either step or jump or hop towards the tops of your mats. Nice big forward fold, big bend in the knees. And then gently roll all the way up to standing. Rolling that spine up with the head coming up last. Good stuff. Okay, inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forwards. Nice big bend in the knees. Inhale, halfway lift, long back, long neck. Exhale, fold. Take the left foot back. Drop the knee if you want to, otherwise you can keep it raised. Either way is good. <laughs> keep the left hand down and inhale the right arm up towards the ceiling in a twist. Try and sense where your hips are and try and keep the hips facing forward, not allowing the hips to swing around with your twisted torso. Good adjustments, lovely. Then bring the top hand to your knee, drop the back knee if you haven't already, and just use that hand to wing the knee out to the side slightly so you have a stretch down the inside of the thigh. Good. A couple more breaths here. Then bring the knee back into centre. Place both hands down the mat. Lift the back knee and step back to plank. Either knees, chest, chin, cobra or come down to chaturanga and into your upward facing dog. Really stretch the chest forwards, tuck the, the tailbone under to give you space in the lower back. Whichever one you've chosen, come back down to the mat, tuck the toes, take the hips back towards your heels and push back up into our downward facing dog. Float the left leg up behind you, bend at the knee, Open the hip and really stretch the toes over the back as if you were trying to tickle the back of your right shoulder. Keep the shoulders level, just really stretch. This really stretches through the real deep core muscles. Another nice big breath here. And then swing that leg forwards, maybe giving it a little bit of help if it needs until the, hand, the foot comes between the hands and then drop the back knee. Take the hips forward as you come up and step it up onto the front leg. So let the hips release forwards and down. Hip bones are still facing forwards and keep them that way. Then take your hands to your hips. Inhale the right arm up above the head and stretch it over to the other side. So we get a really deep stretch down the side of the body and into the psoas muscles, into those deep core muscles. And then coming back to centre, windmill the arms until they frame the front foot, lift the back knee and step forward into forward fold, bending the knees a lot. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. And then inhale, coming all the way up to the top, reaching up, looking up, 
and exhaling hands back to heart center. I'm gonna to have to shed my jumper, sorry. And then we'll do the other side. So, inhaling arms up above the head. And then exhaling, folding forwards, bend the knees a lot. Inhale, halfway lift, long back, long neck. And then exhale, fold. Take the right foot back, either leaving the knee raised or dropping it to the floor. It's up to you, it's your practice. Keep the right hand on the mat and then open up through the left arm, coming into a twist. And again, sense those hips and make sure the hip bones are still facing the front of your mat and you've not twisted with your twist. You could be looking up towards the top thumb or down towards your big toe, whichever is more comfortable. And then drop the back knee and drop the hand to the knee and wing that knee out, stretching into the inner thigh. Couple of breaths there. Then let the knee come back in, frame the front foot with the hands, lift the back knee and step it back to plank. Then it's up to you. Either knees, chest, chin into a cobra or take the weight slightly forward and come down through chaturanga into your upward facing dog. If you're in dog, engage those legs. Make sure that the knees pop up off the floor. Tuck the tailbone under to give you space in the lower back and stretch the chest forwards. Nice big inhale here and then exhale everything back down onto the mat. Tucking the toes, take the hips back towards the heels and press up into our downward facing dog. This time float the right leg up, really stretching through those toes, bending at the knee and opening the hip, trying to reach those toes over the back as if you were tickling the left shoulder on this side. Really getting a deep stretch into the core. And then swing that foot forwards, giving it a tug if you need to land it between the hands. And then drop the back knee, take the hips forward and down, and then raise up the torso, hands to your hips. Beautiful. Inhale the left arm up above the head and reach it across to the other side. So we get a big stretch down the left hand side. Keeping the hips facing forwards. It's a big stretch right into the, all of the muscles connected to the pelvis on the left hand side. We're coming up through center. Drop the hands to frame the front foot, tuck the back toes and lift the knee, and then step it forward to forward fold. Big bend in the knees. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, coming all the way up to the top, reaching up, looking up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forwards. Big bend in the knees. Inhale, halfway lift, long back, long neck. And then exhale, fold. Take the left leg back, and this time walk both of the hands to the inside of the front foot. Maybe step the front foot out to the side slightly to give you more room. You can either then keep the back knee raised or you can drop it down to the mat. And we're aiming to try and get our body on the inside of the front thigh. So we're all gonna have different levels of flexibility, but maybe you can get one elbow down onto the floor. Or maybe you can just get your torso in level with the front leg. Just play around with where you've got space, not just in your hip, but also in the stretch in the back of the glute. You might feel this stretch in a number of different places, so just be kind to yourself. Couple of breaths here. And then when you've had enough of that, come back onto your hands and step that front foot all the way back to the back of the mat and set yourself up so you're nice and straight. 
Then coming forwards into a high plank, bring the knees down to the mat, take the chest and the chin down to the mat, and then scoot forward into Cobra. In Cobra, we're going to squeeze the heels up towards the bum, and if you can reach them, then reach around and reach them and pull them towards the bum. So we're trying to get a bit of a stretch down the front of the thigh here. If you can't reach the heels, just squeeze them into the bum because it's still going to give you that same stretch. If you can reach them and your heels can easily get to your bum, then gently lift your knees, which will stretch down the front of the hips into the groins. Just have a couple of breaths here. And then release them off. Bring the hands either side of the shoulders, tuck the toes, and push yourself all the way up into downward facing dog. Couple of breaths in downward facing dog. And then looking forward, step or jump or hop to the tops of your mats. Nice big bend in the knees as we do a forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, long back. And then exhale, fold. And then inhale, coming all the way up to the top, reaching up, looking up. And then your hands back to your heart centre. Then we'll do the other side. Inhaling, arms up. Exhale, folding forwards, bend the knees up. Inhale, halfway lift, long back, long neck. Exhale, fold. So this time we take the right foot back. Either keep it raised or drop the knee, it's up to you. And bring the hands to the inside of the front foot. Maybe walking that front foot out to the side slightly. <clears throat> if you, the first step is to try and get your torso on the inside of that front thigh. The second step is to maybe drop one elbow, even if you're dropping it down onto a block or a couple of books or something. And then just have a couple of breaths here, stretching it out. And placing the hands down once more. Take that front foot all the way back, stepping it up into downward facing dog. Have a wiggle and a jiggle in downward dog. Maybe dipping one hip into the middle and then the other hip into the middle. Maybe just padding through the heels. Maybe taking the chest closer towards the thighs and lengthening the spine. Move your dog in whatever way you feel it needs to move. And then looking forwards, step, oh, oh no, I nearly missed a bit. <laughs> Take the hips to hand towards the mat so we come into our plank. Can't believe I nearly let you out of plank. <laughs> and then take the knees down towards the mat and then slowly take the chest and the chin down towards the mat, keeping the elbows in and scoot forwards into your cobra pose. And let's do that um, quad stretch again. So squeeze the heels in towards your hips and your bum. If you can reach around and pull them in, fabulous. If not, just squeeze them towards your bum. If your feet come easily onto your glutes, then lift your knees and stretch out along the fronts of those thighs, into the hips and into the groin. Couple of breaths here. And then release that off. Bring the hips either side of your shoulders. Press yourself up all the way back up into our downward facing dog. And then tiptoe the feet all the way towards the front of the mat, stretching out down the backs of the legs, maybe coming onto the tiptoes if you need to, or the fingertips as well. And then fold and rest in forward fold. Big bend in the knees. Nice big inhale here and a nice big exhale here. Take a nice big inhale and then on an exhale, roll the spine up slowly, bit by bit by bit by bit. Excellent. Then take a quarter turn and come to face the sides of your mats. Okay, a couple of options on this one. 
So you can either do this with a bent leg or a straight leg, but we're really getting into that hip mobility again before we do some deeper hip bends. So <clears throat> we take a nice big inhale reaching up and then we fold forwards, keeping the legs as straight as possible this time. So we don't have to get our hands flat on the mat. We can be on our fingertips. We can have a block that we're resting on, whatever is most comfortable to you. So if you're using a block, just have your hands on the block like so. Now, as I said, you can do this exercise with a straight leg or a long leg. I mean, a straight leg or a bent knee. So if you're doing the bent knee version, you bend the knee so that your knee is basically at 45 degrees. And then you reach your leg up towards the ceiling. You take your knee out to the side, bring it around in a circle, and then you bring it back to the start. If you're doing it with a straight leg, you lift your straight leg straight out behind you as high as you can, and then you bring it out to the side as high as you can before it comes back to the starting position. So <clears throat> we're going to take the leg back three times, then switch to the other side. So left leg first, stretch the leg back with straight leg or bent leg, it's up to you and then bring it out to the side as high as you can, really using those outer hip muscles, and then back to the start position. Take it out the back for the second round. We're doing this nice and slowly, bringing it out to the side, using those thigh muscles, using those outer hips to hold that leg up. And then the last one, take it back. Keep that leg as high as you can, reaching it around to the side, and then back to the mat. Maybe stand up and have a little wiggle out between the legs if you need to. And then we'll do the other side. So three circles with the right leg. So take the hands back down, either on fingertips or use a block. <clears throat> you can even use a chair or a stool. And then take the other leg behind you. So take it up first, it can be straight or bent, and then reaching it out to the side, keeping it as high as you can and then it comes down to meet the other leg back to the starting position. Second round, take it back, really stretching it up as high as you can, coming out to the sides, using that outer thigh, using that outer hip, it comes back down. And then the third one, lifting it up to the back, taking it all the way around, and then squeezing it back down again. Excellent. And then roll yourself all the way back up to standing. Have a little kick out of those legs. <clears throat> so a little bit similar to a couple of the things we did on Saturday in terms of balance now. So <clears throat> it doesn't matter where you are on your mat, but take your left leg up in front of you, maybe holding the left knee with the left hand. From here, using that range of motion we just found in our hips, we're going to take the knee all the way around to the side, keeping it as high as it can. As it goes around to the back, you can let go of it, either bring your hands to your hips or your heart, whichever feels more comfortable. Take it all the way around, really watching your balance, straighten that leg out and pop it down onto the floor. So your torso is still facing forward, so we're really twisted. Beautiful stuff. Okay, then we come back up off of that toe. We squeeze that leg back up again, really keeping it as high as we possibly can. Good, keeping control of the movement. This time crossing it over the front of the other leg and sitting down into a figure four. Good stuff. Really sitting down as deep as you can, opening the chest. You can hold onto the heel of the foot if you want to, if that feels more comfortable for you. <clears throat> and then coming up, put that foot back down onto the mat. Really good stuff, guys. It's really challenging for not just hip range of motion, but also balance in this one. So let's try the other side, because you'll always be stronger on one side than the other. <clears throat> so right leg up in front of you, hand to knee. Really ground down through that standing leg. Zip everything in and up so the core is strong. Take that knee out to the side. 
until you can't hold on to it anymore. Bring your hands either to center or to your hips, whichever feels more natural. And then take that all the way around the back, really controlling that movement, pulling those core muscles in, stretching that leg away, letting the foot drop down to the mat, and then twisting your shoulders to the side of the mat so that you're really twisted. Beautiful. So taking the weight back in the front leg, lift that back to leg, she says. <laughs> Bring it around the back, lifting it as high as you can as it comes around the side, bringing it forwards, crossing the ankle over the thigh, and sitting down in our tree. I mean chair, figure four chair. <clears throat> Keeping the chest open, sitting down as much as you can. You can always hold the foot and the knee if that's more comfortable for you. One more breath here, and then stand up and let that one go. Well done. Those are some really, really deep movements of the hip, so that's really, really good. Well done. So take the feet nice and wide. Toes pointing out the same direction as your knees. And we'll come down into a yogi squat. Go as deep as you can. If that's to here, that's absolutely brilliant. If you can go down a bit further, maybe elbows to knees, great stuff. If it's in your practice to come all the way down and you can bring your hips all the way down in between your heels, then feel free to do that. Equally, if you have a wall nearby, you can always practice this with your back against a wall and your bum on the floor um, and just getting more motion into the hips and the ankles. And then maybe just rock from side to side a little. Good. Okay, there's lots of options for this next one. So if you need to take a rest from being in your squat and just watch what I'm gonna show you next, then feel free to do so. So if you are in your squat, we can stretch out down the side of the body from dropping one shoulder in and then the other shoulder in. If you want to go a bit deeper than that and you want to try and do a bind, take one hand down towards the floor and the other one up towards the ceiling. You drop the arm towards the ceiling behind your back and then you try and bind through your legs. So if I show you sideways, we're in our squat, we take one hand down, one arm up, drop it around the back and try and reach it behind. <clears throat> if you're all the way down in Malasana and you want to go for a bind, it's a similar sort of thing. If you're in Malasana, the shoulder that's going to go under the leg, you need to really get the knee on the back of the shoulder and wrap the arm around the side. Then you reach the other arm up and reach it behind your back for the twist. So it's really gonna depend on lots and lots of things here. <laughs> so it depends on how long your arms are in comparison to how much you body and leg you need to get around. It's going to um, have an effect on how much flexibility you have in your hip and how deep you can go. Lots and lots of different things going on. Also the tightness of your hamstrings and your glutes as well will also play a part. So whichever one you choose, come down into your squat. Um, reach the left hand down and the right arm up. If you're in your squat, drop the top arm around your back and go for the bind underneath the leg. If you're in Malasana, you want your shoulder on the inside of your knee, reach the arm around the front of the leg and go for the bind that way. Opening the right shoulder up towards the ceiling, in both options. One more breath here. We'll release the bind, come back to centre, stretch the legs up and then come down to the other side. So if you're in your squat, reach the right arm down to the floor and the left arm up towards the ceiling. Drop the left arm behind your back, take the right arm through your legs and try and take the bind around your back. If you're in Malasana, then your right shoulder's on the inside of your right knee, take the arm around the front of the leg 
and take the top arm around your back for the bind. On this side, we're opening the left shoulder towards the ceiling. Really good stuff, well done guys. You'll be pleased to know this is the only bind in this evening's class. <laughs> right, so release that off, stretch the legs up, roll all the way up, inhale the arms up above the head, maybe reach the arms back, through a back bend, and then exhale the hands down by the sides. Good. Next one's going to be camel. So I'm going to show you from the side and then I'm going to switch around because we're going to do a flowing camel. Um, there's lots of options here. You can either just have your hands on your lower back to support your lower back. Um, you can have your hands on your hips if that feels comfortable. And you can also have your hand on your heel. Now it depends on the flexibility of your back as to whether you'll be able to reach your heel or not. But a little trick is that if you come up onto your tiptoes, your heel gets that little bit closer. So it makes it a little bit easier to reach. So what we're going to do is because we, the camel's really deep opening for the hips. So before we go into full camel, we're going to do a little flowy warm up -y thing, um, even though we're quite warm already. So for this one, what we do is we swing our arm around. So if I'm starting with the left arm, I'm either swinging it around to the back of where my tailbone is or to my heel, and I'm stretching the other arm up and over. I then swim around to the other side, either bringing hand to coccyx or down towards my heel and reaching the other arm over. So we're literally swimming from one side to the other. So swimming one way. Take a nice big inhale here and then exhale as you swim to the other side. <sighs> really trying to keep the hips forward. So we don't want to see the hips going back. We want to keep the hips forward as we're swimming from one side. And then we swim around towards the other side. <sighs> Good, keep going from one side. And then we're swimming around towards the other side. Okay, now moving a little bit more slowly this time. We're going to swim around towards one side, reach the hand up, and then try and take that leg out to the side to stretch into the hip as well. So really stretch the hips forward. And then as you come up, we bring that leg in, we swim around to the other side, we take the leg out to the side. Bring it back, bring the leg in. If you find it easier to do the leg first, take the leg out first and then swim it around into half camel, stretching those hips forward. Then bring it up, bring the knee in, take the other leg out, swim it around to the other side, really reaching those hips forwards. And then bring it back to centre. Good. Before we do full camel, just bring your hips to your heels, walk your hands out in front of you, and just slowly and gently stretch the spine from end to end. Then coming up, We'll only do one camel, so it's up to you how deep you go. Knees should be directly below the hips, and your toes can either be completely flat on the floor, or if you're more comfortable, up on your toes. You can either have your hands on your lower back, so hands on the tailbone. We really want to encourage our um, hips to stay forwards. So if you imagine I had a... Um, broom handle kind of across the middle of your back. What you're trying to do in camel is lift up and over that broom so that you get a nice curve along the whole back, completely opposite of limbo. <laughs> so really stretch the, um, the spine up before you go anywhere. And then gently take your spine back. The hips are coming further and further forward. The glutes are really squeezing in, the inner thighs are squeezing towards one another, the tummy muscles are pulled in. And you can either keep your hands here, or if it's in your practice and you don't need to move in order to be able to reach your heel, 
then you can go down and reach for your heel. And lastly, drop your head back. But whichever one you do, do what's right for your practice today. Three deep breaths here. And then before you move, think about engaging those core tummy muscles. If you're holding onto your heels, bring your hands back to your sacrum, to your tailbone. And then very gently rock yourself back up to standing, on your knees that is, and then drop your hips down. And just have a moment, maybe a couple of circles through the shoulders, take a deep couple of breaths. Camels are really, really deep back bend and it requires us to have the hips and the glutes and the back all warmed up. So it's a really, really big posture. Excellent. You'll be pleased to know the rest of class is sat on the floor. <laughs> so <clears throat> the next posture is butterfly. So sitting on our sit bones, feet come out in front of us and the soles of the feet go together. And just have a little flutter of your butterfly wings. <laughs> so just flap the knees a little bit up and down, up and down, up and down. And then just to really awaken all the muscles going into the hips, <clears throat> place your hands on the inside of your knees. Now use your leg muscles to squeeze your knees up as you just resist that movement with the hands and then release it. So use your leg muscles, really squeeze the legs up, pressing the knees into the hands and resist that movement with your hands and then release. And then the last one, squeeze those knees up, really squeeze, press those knees into the hands as much as you can and then completely relax and release it. Then bring the feet to the floor and wrap your arms around your knees. So your knees are in your elbows. This is completely opposite stretch. So this time we press our knees out into our elbows and resist that movement with our arms. And then release. Press the knees into the elbows, really pressing, pressing, pressing. And then release. And then press the knees into the elbows, pressing, pressing, pressing. And then release. Good stuff. Okay. <clears throat> Moving the legs into 90-90. So one shin is in front of you in line with the edge of your yoga mat. And then the thigh is going in the same direction. So your legs are in like half, half a very horrible logo from the Second World War. <laughs> so <clears throat> sit up nice and tall. Bring your hands behind your torso. And what we're going to attempt to do is move our legs from 90-90 on this side to 90-90 on the other side. So roll around on your hips, swing the legs around and move into 90-90 on the other side. Really pull the core muscles in and then let's go again, taking them back to the starting position. Now you can either keep using your hands or if you want a bit of an extra challenge, you can bring your hands to heart centre. Take a nice big inhale. On the exhale, pull the core muscles in and roll yourself around into 90-90 on the other side. We'll do another round. So take it back to the starting position. Then come around to 90-90 on the other side. and then take it back to the starting position. Good stuff. Okay, this time, take the feet out as if you were going to do a wide leg um, forward fold, but we're not, we're going to keep the feet on the floor. Hands behind you, squeeze one knee into the middle as much as you can, and then take it out then squeeze the other knee into the middle as much as you can. You might feel this as a deep stretch on the outer hip, you might not. It depends on where your tight spots are. So squeeze one knee in, take it out, squeeze the other knee in, take it out. I feel it on one side more than the other. Take the knee in, squeeze it out, take the other knee in, squeeze it out, good. Then take the knee out and back to neutral and the other knee out and back to neutral. 
with the left leg back to neutral, then the right leg back to neutral. One more each side, take it out, squeeze it in, take it out, squeeze it in. Back to 90-90, or near as you can. This time really um, try and keep the torso up straight, one hand in between your legs and one hand next to your body. I know Emma hates this one, so I apologise in advance. What we're going to do is lift this knee and this foot, so the back leg, up off the mat and back down again. Lift it up and back down, lift it up and back down. We're going to do three more. Three, two, one. Brilliant for getting the outer hip working. Swing it around to the other side and we'll do the other side. So lift it up, put it down. Really pull those core muscles in. Lift it up, pop it down. Lift it up, pop it down. Three more. Three, two, one. I knew you were going to love that one, but you'll be pleased to know it's all over now. So last hip stretch here before we move into the final little flow. So one leg with the shin parallel to the side of the mat. There's different options here. You can either just bring the other foot straight in front, if that's enough stretch for you on the lower leg. You can bring the foot across, and um, if that's enough stretch on the lower leg. You can also cross the ankle over the front knee, and then try and get this knee somewhere closer to there. This is one of my worst stretches because my hips just don't like to go in this direction. So take whichever stretch serves you well. Um, and also have a bit of a rock. I find it easier if I lean forward a little bit, it just takes the pressure off a little bit and gives me a bit more room. Um, but quite frankly, it's excruciating, so we won't be staying here very long. <laughs> Take a nice big inhale and then we'll release that one off. And then we'll switch legs. So take the other leg, so the shin's parallel to the side of the mat, and then either just take the foot straight in front and press this knee down, or take the foot over and cross it and press the knee down, or cross the foot over the knee, and then try and get some form of some sort of comfort if you can in that pose. So take a couple of breaths. Excellent. And then release it off. Okay. Take the right, the left leg, sorry, out long and bring the right leg up and over. Sit up really tall, make sure you're sat on your sit bones, and then hug the left arm around that front knee and take the right arm behind you into a gentle seated twist. Really sit up nice and tall. Twist as far as your body feels it can this evening. So nice big inhale to sit up tall and exhale to twist. Inhale to sit up tall, exhale to twist. Inhale to sit up tall, exhale to twist. And then release that off, turning all the way around the other side for a gentle counter twist. And then unravel the legs and bring the other leg in. Step it up and over. Make sure those sit bones are nice and grounded. Take the left arm around behind you and hug the right arm around the leg, looking out over the left shoulder. Sitting up nice and tall on an inhale, exhale, twist. Inhale to really lengthen, exhale, twist. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist. Brilliant stuff. Okay, the last stretch before we come into Savasana is pigeon. But I'm gonna give you two options. You can either do traditional pigeon, where your leg is at the front of your mat and the other leg is stretched out behind you. And you can either do traditional pigeon, you can do sleeping pigeon, or you can do a bind with back leg to get an extra quad stretch in as well, which is the starts of king pigeon. 
Or if pigeon is your nemesis and you don't like that by any stretch of the imagination, um, or if you've got any pain in your knees, then it's good not to have that extra pressure of your body weight on your knees. So you can do reclined pigeon. So in reclined pigeon, step one, you interlace the fingers around the back of the leg and just pull the knee in towards the torso. Other leg can be out long, or the foot can be on the floor, whichever feels more comfortable. Or you can do full um, reclined pigeon, where you hold the foot and the knee and you pull that in towards you. Again, the other leg can be uh, foot on the floor or out long. Or if you want to do flying pigeon, then you bring the other leg in as well. So it's like a, a figure, reclined figure four, which will really stretch into your bum muscles. So pick whichever version you would like. <clears throat> and then take six deep breaths in that pose. Again, whichever one you're in, gently manoeuvre yourself to the other side, however you would like to do that. Relax down into your pose, whichever one you've chosen, and take six nice deep breaths on this side. And just notice where you feel any differences from one side to the other. whichever pose you're in, release it off and gently make your way down onto your back, onto your mat, into Savasana. Re-clothing if you need to or grabbing a blanket and get yourself really comfortable. So the legs are out long on the mat, unless you have any lower back issues, in which case bring the feet to the floor and let the knees roll in. Make sure the lower back is completely comfortable. Arms down by the sides, can be palm up or palm down. <clears throat> and tuck those shoulder blades underneath the torso. Really enjoying the weight of your body on the mat. Sealing in the practice that you've just put it through. Letting the breathing come back to normal, letting the heart beat re regulate, knowing you don't have to concentrate on balancing on one leg any longer. And just completely relax on your mat. Just watching the breath as it flows into the body and as it flows out again.
then gently start to think about moving. Maybe a single finger or wiggling the fingers and the toes. Maybe rolling the head from side to side. Maybe having a big stretch or a twist. Move the body in whatever way it wants to move. Or don't move at all, so exactly where you are if you feel like a few extra minutes chilling out. <clears throat> but if you're ready to finish, then roll over onto your side and come up to seated. Thank you for practicing with me this evening. And I hope to see you on your mats again soon.